This Sunday, the Nelson County Historical Society will be hosting another presentation on Hurricane Camille. This August marks 50 years since that tragic storm killed 153 people in the state of Virginia. 80% of those deaths occurred in Nelson County. The first part of the presentation is going to focus on the helicopter pilots who were instrumental in recovery efforts and getting help into the county after the storm. At first, they were checking the county out to see if where the survivors were. There were plenty of places that were cut off from vehicular traffic. The presentation will also include interviews from the Shenandoah Valley Mennonite Relief Group who helped clean up and rebuild much of the county. The Mennonite community came in from the Shenandoah Valley and were heroic throughout the following year or more. Now this event is free. It's at 2 p.m. Sunday and it's being held at the Nelson Center on Route 29 in Lovingston. I've been to most of the yeah. presentations that they've been holding since April. I think I only had to miss one. Mm. Uh, very informative, very good, uh, and I highly recommend it if maybe you remember that event. Uh, maybe you're just enthralled with hurricanes. Maybe you just want to learn a little bit more about the history. Um, they've done a very good job at the presentations and I highly recommend you look into it. The information will be posted on our website, whsv.com, and I'll also put that on my Facebook page. Hurricane Camille was a powerful Carry 5 hurricane that struck the Gulf Coast 50 years ago. Forecasters at the time thought the storm was weakening until it moved into Virginia. As people in the Shenandoah Valley and Blue Ridge Mountain communities were going to bed on the night of August 19th, 1969, the unimaginable happened. 10 to 30 inches of rain fell in eight hours. Chief Meteorologist Aubrey Urbanowitz tells us the story of Camille, how survivors made it out of the floodwaters that night, and the even bigger danger was besides the rising water. Nelson County is a beautiful mountain community nestled next to the Blue Ridge Mountains. But on the night of August 19, 1969, everything changed. It was a disaster like no other when a combination of weather ingredients came together over this area and changed it forever. It was raining real hard. Milton Harris was a 17-year-old teenager back in August of 1969. The Harris family lived along Muddy Creek in Nelson County. And my father kept saying we need to keep an eye on the creek. The water kept rising, eventually spilling over the road. And he said, we, we need to get out of here in case that road bank breaks loose. He said, if that breaks loose, we are gone. Milton's sister Iris was only six at the time. Somebody carried me out of the house and I do remember we had to put our hands like this because you just, it, it was raining so hard you couldn't breathe. The whole family piled into the car. The road was blocked. So we figured we'd turn around and go back the other way up to higher ground and the water was across the road there. This is where their car stalled in the middle of Route 29 and they had to nervously wait and hope for the rain to eventually stop. The lightning was so vivid that they could see all of the destruction happening around them. I remember the lightning was like fierce, like just like it lit it up like daylight. The lightning, lightning didn't flash. It, ju it just literally stayed lit. And I remember seeing trailers on, the si on their side actually had, had tumbled over. And I remember seeing logs float by. When the storm was over and daylight came, it was a shocking scene. Devastation. The Harris family survived the night, but in Massey's Mill, another family did not. It just so happens that, that the Sunday before that happened, I was watching the news, not knowing that you know, we were going to be hit you know, two days later. Hurricane Camille moved from the Gulf Coast to Virginia by Tuesday evening. My father and I, anyway, we were on our front porch and we were just, you know, just watching it rain and uh, the storm going on. We just did just a normal storm. But it wasn't a typical storm. After midnight, a phone call woke up Warren Rains and his family. Massey's Mill was flooded. They decided to evacuate, trying to make it to a neighbor's house on a hill nearby. We didn't get 10 feet before the engine died out. Water killed the engine. They left the car to try to make it to the road above, but the water came in too fast. It went from six to eight feet deep just in a matter of, of minutes. At that point, everyone was fighting to keep their head above water. And I hollered to my mother. I said, I, I said, I'm losing my grip. 
And she said, we're holding on good here. She said, let go, we'll catch you. And I let go. When I got to them, they were gone. Soaking wet and cold, Warren was able to cling to a willow tree, holding on for dear life. Whole homes were floating by. I mean, one float by real close to me, a whole house. Cows, logs, automobiles. Amazingly, both Warren and his brother Carl survived that terrible night. Once the sun came up, they were rescued. The sad part about it was the upstairs of our home was okay, fine. If we'd have stayed there, we'd have been fine. Warren and Carl lost both parents and three siblings. We went on ahead to funerals at the church. You know, it was something to see four caskets inside of a church. It was more than anybody could stand. <coughs> Excuse me. Their youngest sister's body was found a few weeks after the storm. 124 lives were lost in Nelson County that night. 32 people have never been found. Camille's Destruction is sponsored by Turner's Body Shop. Hurricane Camille was a Category 5 hurricane that made landfall on the Gulf Coast on Sunday, August 17, 1969. The storm weakened as it moved inland until a catastrophic, unprecedented storm formed right over the Blue Ridge Mountains. Here's Chief Meteorologist Aubrey Urbanowitz with more in this special report. Just a look when, when daylight came, I mean, just and from walking, it was just unbelievable, the destruction. Early on the morning of August 20th, Stunned survivors were grappling with what they saw, complete devastation of everything they knew. You could look at the mountains and, and you could see streaks where landslides had came. Geologists have counted more than 5,600 landslides in Nelson County from the storm. 50 years later, if you look close, you can still see some of the scars from Camille. Human loss was the big thing. And not just the fact that a person died, it was the fact that they died in such a violent way. Ed Tinsley was a state trooper in Amherst County in 1969. On the morning of August 20th, he was sent to drive Nelson County to see what roads were open. And it took me about eight hours to do that, but there was no road, secondary, major, anything open into the center of the county. The flood waters receded quickly, but the mud left behind was 20 to 30 feet deep. Roads and bridges either washed out or destroyed. The only way to get help into the county was by helicopter. Survivors like Warren Rain started searching for his parents and three siblings. All day long, just searching and, um, and asking people if they'd seen anybody. Warren and his brother Carl eventually realized that the rest of their family didn't make it. My brother and I had actually become orphans overnight. And it was just from there, we just had to plan on what to do. It wasn't just flooding that killed so many people. Mudslides proved deadly. When these big surges came down and wiped these, wiped these little uh, communities out, it just wiped whole families like here on Davis Creek. 52 people lost their lives in the small community of Davis Creek. Because the rain was so heavy and so much fell in a short amount of time, all telephone and radio communication was lost. The communications, the lack of communications was the big, big problem. Tinsley recalls one of the more shocking sights. Looking at the bridge at uh, Ty River, where the railroad uh, went across, the bridge, the, the supports on that were gone and the rails were just hanging. Four rails hanging up in the air. Amazingly, the Ty River Railroad Bridge was rebuilt in just 11 days. We were working anywhere from 16 to 18 hours a day, so you didn't have a lot of time to think about what you were doing, just done what you had to do. As the cleanup and recovery started, volunteers came in to help, including the Virginia Mennonites from the Shenandoah Valley, who were instrumental in helping to clean up and rebuild the community, wiped away by Camille. Camille's Destruction is sponsored by Turner's Body Shop. Just a look when, and because when of the hurricane in Nelson came. County, 123 people died and more than 20 people lo lost their lives in Rockbridge County. And it's estimated more than 200 people had to be evacuated from Waynesboro in the floodwaters. But one question still lingers. Could another storm like this happen again? Head over to WHSV.com to hear the response from the National Weather Service and to see interviews by some of the survivors of Hurricane Camille. You've heard the stories and you've heard how just a few managed to survive that night. 
Milton Harris, Warren Rains, and Trooper Ed Tinsley have told their stories. Now, hear from them again, a few more stories from that night. Once in a while, waves would literally hit the car, and you could see it go across the hood of the car. Anyhow, I held on to that tree, and it wasn't just a little bit of time before the force of the water uprooted that tree, and the tree fell over. I only did it once, but I was asked to try to identify a body that came off of Davis Creek. And you could, you could only tell there was somebody young. But you know, some things that, uh, that uh, bring back the memories of it is helicopters. I can be outside and hear a helicopter go over. I can close my eyes and I can, I can play the whole scene with helicopters doing the recovery. Uh, uh, August 20th, every year, uh, you don't forget it. The sad part about it was the upstairs of our home was okay, fine. If we'd have stayed there, we'd have been fine. The downstairs was totally demolished completely. It, when, after the water went out, it, the house had anywhere from 18 to 24 inches of mud inside the, the bottom floor. But uh, if we had have stayed there that night, it would have just been so frightening just watching everything go by and the, the lightning and so forth. And you'd just be waiting for the house to explode or just, just break up and then, then you were gone. I mean, you just, we'd just be waiting any minute. You knew it was coming. You had whole families that were wiped out. I mean, I've got a picture of three concrete slabs and there was three houses sitting at that location and after that surge over to Davis Creek there wasn't anything left but three concrete slabs and everything that lived there gone. Milton Harris is also sharing something that's a little bit on the lighter side and who his mother blames for the flood of 1969 and why. This is the funny part. My mother blamed my father for the flood of 69. My mother was a very strong Baptist lady. Somebody had gave him a recipe on how to make dandelion wine. He would go out on Sunday mornings in the yard and cut dandelions to make his wine. And the first batch had reached the five weeks, but he had forgot to put raisins in it. So he went out and on Sunday cut more dandelions, made another batch, I think it was like seven gallons is supposed to make or whatever. And he stored all of this in the basement. And it lacked about two days of fermenting, the second batch did. It was about two days before that fermented, the flood came. And it took everything out of the basement. It washed everything away from the basement and caused, you know, caused all that other ruckus and stuff. And my mother looked at him and she said, you caused this. <laughs> God punished you. <laughs> So could another flood like this happen again? In short, yes, but the effects would be very different. In 1969, weather satellites were still in their infancy. Rain gauges and river monitoring, they were all done manually, and the information had to be called in to the Weather Bureau. Weather forecasting has significantly improved with technology. Here's Chris Strong with the National Weather Service in Sterling, who talks about the changes made after Camille. So yeah, certainly we've come a long way with not only the radar, but also uh, the ability for communication that, you know, this event happened during the overnight. Uh, so there was a real lack of uh, understanding at the time in the Weather Bureau, uh, what it was called at the time, on what was going on because of those two things. Now we have radar that can scan the, uh, the skies of the Shenandoah Valley so effectively. And again, all that technology, enhanced communication, uh, it's just, it's, it's a lot easier to get information like that, even if it does happen in off hours of the day or night or, or uh, of the, the calendar, that uh, that information gets here and then we can turn that around and get warnings out to the public now much more efficiently than we did 50 years ago. Automatic river gauge monitoring was established after Camille and a series of flood events in the 1970s. The Saffir Simpson hurricane rating scale was implemented after Camille, and the Virginia Department of Emergency Management was established after the storm. So while we can't prevent another storm like Camille from happening again, we are now much more prepared and aware. Camille's destruction is sponsored by Turner's Body Shop.